I, I, I didn't ask. I didn't ask myself this before. I'm double on the screen now. Are you going to diet down for the wedding? Is this part of the thing? Are you going to do wedding pictures? Oh, yeah. Shirtless, I hope? Yes. Yeah, no. Well, <laughs> no. you know what? That's up in the air. That's right. to be. But uh, yeah, so I did get engaged in the last week. I'm really excited about it. She obviously is. Uh, I've been excommunicated from the Church of Kyle. Um, sad. It's sad. I don't know who he's going to replace <laughs> as the new archbishop or whatever the hell, because not a very deep bench in that church. <laughs> oh, it's a very deep bench. There's plenty of people out there who aren't stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just not in this call. You were on no. thin ice when you practiced the pullout method, Taylor. This is just oh, the, true. This is just the final That's, blow. I can see why Kyle would never want to get married or anything because you never ever want children. No, I actually, I not. I do want kids, and so okay. Well, you kids. know, and, and I, I, usually when people say they want kids, I'm like, have you tried a dog? And, but you have, <laughs> have tried the dogs, Two? and and yeah. so I I have no I have I have nothing to say. Yeah. Nothing to say. Just gonna start firing out kids, mm. Mormon style. So oh, I, I'll be able to field a baseball team, but I won't. I'll field two hockey teams against each other, so that's more fun, right? <laughs> if I, four on four, I guess it'll have to be. And you know, me and their mom can play goalie. Yeah, I'm if really. She can still to walk. It. Yeah, dude. I was getting so many comments on Twitch last night. It's like R.I.P. your your fiance's pussy when those hammerhead babies start oh, parading geez, through. I get it? I didn't know what we were talking about. Yeah. I, I thought it was the conception that was stopping her from walking <laughs> until he said that. <laughs> Just you're going to have to like, get the jaws of life to open the pelvis a little more to let my monster headed no, children out. No shit. Uh, my mom was in labor, I think, for over 24 hours because my head was so fucking big, like coming out. So I'm going to put I'm going to say 48 minimum. Oh, yeah. I was yeah. a two day child also. Mm -hmm. Wait, are you the oldest? Uh, no. Oh, okay. Usually the oldest takes forever. <clears throat> so, so yeah. I want to talk about this a little bit. Um, how long have you been thinking about proposing? Probably the better part of a year. Okay. How long ago did you purchase the ring? Uh, so I did something different with that. I used, uh, uh, a family oh, ring. Be romantic. Uh-huh. And then, uh, figured then we would go get one afterward. And the, you know, the good thing about that is that you, you get to play it off as this is like very sentimental, but really it saves you a trip. Okay. So, so follow up question. How long ago did you acquire the family ring? Oh, well, it, like it came from like my grandma. And so it was never like, a, I got to pick it up. It was just like the last time I saw her before I was doing it. It's like, oh yeah, did you got that by the way that we talked about using? She's like, oh, here you go. But so, it's, okay. it, it's Thanksgiving been for a while. Is this... Yeah, I answer? guess that's when I grabbed it. it was around Thanksgiving. That okay, so how, how long were you carrying it around, perhaps in your pocket, before you, you know, popped the question? Oh, not very long at all. Okay. Yeah, yeah hardly any time. It was, a, it was a big, annoying box, and you look like an asshole walking around with that giant <laughs> bulge in your pocket. And so I was like, what, am I going to go to a fancy dinner? And she's going to sit there like, you're, you're either hard or you're about to propose, you know, so that <laughs> so was how did the, how did the proposal go down? Did you like hide it in a dessert or did you just whoop, ready to it, ruin your life? Like, the, ready to ruin the, my life? <laughs> <laughs> no, what I did is I put it inside a ravioli. <laughs> and then, and then, and then, then we waited for and she'll be able to wear it in 36 <laughs> to 48 hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I put it in a little gnocchi thing and then no, uh, just pretty traditional, pretty normal, just regular proposal. Did you get down on one knee? Yeah, I did too. Yeah, I, th I figured that's I like the that. plan. You know, did you like ask she her father? Yeah, I did. I did too. Mm -hmm. I so thought that was traditional boys. Respectful. I like yeah, it. Very, very. Regal. And she's she's very traditional. Also, she was the one who was like, you know, I would really appreciate, you know, if we ever get married. If you ever, this is a long time ago, like, and she was like, I would like you to ask my father first. And I was like, oh, of course. And it, that was the first day. Do that. that was, and that was three years ago. Almost scared him <laughs> off, frankly. Yeah. It was, it's like, okay, maybe, we should, um, maybe we should get appetizers first. <laughs> <laughs> she said that on <laughs> Tinder, actually. It was, it was the first <laughs> conversation. It was the first, the first thing. Just yeah. Ask my father. But. Well, no, in all seriousness, um, congratulations. Thank uh, you. I'm very happy for you because I know this will make you happy. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. sure I, I, 
I've never met her, but I look forward to meeting her at some point because she must be a wonderful person because she you're is. one of the smartest people I know. You're one of my best friends. I care about you a tremendous amount. I love you. And uh, love you too, man. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, I wish you all the best and uh, tons of happiness and, you know, all jokes aside, really happy Thank you. for you. Yeah. I, I'm really excited about it also. Like, I'm, I'm really looking forward to but it. But don't you ask me to come to that fucking what do they call it? A wedding? That, 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 <laughs> that, that arranged, that, that, that like personal life execution that you guys are going to hold in a, in a church somewhere. Like, no, nah, but seriously though. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. Love you so much. So happy Don't for you. you. It's awesome. When I, when I read the, me- when I, when I read your message, uh, I, I was just like, oh man, that's great. That's, that's awesome. I was really happy for you. I was super oh, excited you. when I read your message. I, and it was the same yeah. sort of thought process. Like this is good for Taylor. This, I don't know. Taylor Taylor's doing something amazing right now. And then I'm yeah. pleased for you. So it's great. Like I was, you know, such a big lifestyle change. I was like, am I going to do it? And then suddenly start feeling like cold feet. I was about to say wet feet. I don't think that's the, <laughs> I don't think that's the, name of the thing. cold feet. My feet get wet. And it was like, no, it was like, I was even more excited. I'm like, damn, this is like, it's finally moving. It's finally going forward. Like I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. So I, I, I uh, I raided Dick Masterson's chat last night after I finished on Twitch and his first thing, cause he follows me on Twitter. So he saw it. He was like, Oh, Taylor raided me. Ah, oh, dude, ruin his fucking life, man. And then he just starts, <laughs> goes right back to hit playing on his piano and singing as he does. But very, very funny. Cause he's, I, I would say he is, he's probably got a competing church of Dick to go alongside the church of Kyle. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I mean, think. I think it's a good thing that you're getting your first marriage uh started yeah, this way. early in life yeah 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 then i can yeah. re revamp you know but oh what are your original question am i gonna get in good shape for it uh yeah it's a really good motivating thing because like those are gonna be the pictures that will like be in my house forever mm-hmm. and so like i am gonna be just have you considered going the all the time i'm a grandpa and so like i, I want to be able to tell my grandkids like guess what i wasn't a fat tub of shit always look at me Look at me 50, what, 40 years ago. What if you not went there. the other way, Taylor? What what if what if you, you lowered expectations by looking horrific on your wedding? And then you would just have a low bar for the rest of your life, right? Like just, anytime <laughs> someone sees you on the mantle, they'll be like, Taylor really glowed up. <laughs> why, why'd you get all your wedding photos in a wheelchair? <laughs> well, it was after the war. the war. You were in the did you serve? In the war, Grandpa. <laughs> as far as you know, <laughs> you know the Iraq War. <laughs> Grandpa, were you a hero in the war? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Grandpa, why do you why do you sound like Colonel Sanders all of a sudden? <laughs> uh, yeah. So I got to use it as a chance to to slim down because like this last week I was on on a trip with uh, my girlfriend and I in Florida and like I said on PKM we were going to do some Disney World thing when they were like that's probably a fucking bad idea so we switched to like to like a bunch of kayaking like fishing biking that kind of outdoorsy thing and because it was you know middle of the fucking week for the most part nobody was anywhere like we had the whole run of every park we went to every every you know stream or whatever we were doing it was great um, at one point we went to and I've never done this before we went to a dog bedding track have you ever done yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. Watch Greyhounds. I know and of it. It was, it was so much fun. Like I, I only bet twice, uh, and then after that, like my girlfriend and I were just betting each other because I didn't, I didn't know anything about the dogs. I didn't know what all the numbers meant. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I knew. I thought STR was on it, and I'm like, that must be the dog's strength. Yeah, it's. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, but how would you gauge the strength of a greyhound? Dog? <laughs> and then I asked some other guy, and he was like, that's that means weight. Taylor's getting married in a couple weeks, but I sent him his uh, his gift a little early. I didn't know when it would get there, um, but 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 I but I ordered it a couple days ago, and I guess it got there much more uh, quickly than I thought it would. Yes, uh, I I offered to like sign up for his registry and get him you know whatever he's got on there, but uh, I, I was like, hey, if you don't give me that registry in time, I'm just gonna send you a whole shitload of meats. And he was like, meats, you say? Yeah, yeah, and I was like, I I have so many cups and plates now from the registry that like I can't even fit in my cupboards, <laughs> and so and so uh, my I, I was like, dude, send me the fucking meat. And Kyle was like, I'll do it. I'll send you meat. And I was like, D- send me the meat. And so he sent me what has to be twenty five a twenty five pound leg 
<laughs> of, oh of my god! Of prosciutto? It's, we oh. can't see it. It's all fucking fucked up. I get it's the idea. Is that gonna last one? How many nights is that gonna last with you? That would last a week at my house. Slicing off it prosciutto said, all night. Said, when I ordered it, it said it was eighteen pounds, and I did the math. That's roughly seventeen thousand calories he's holding. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> Christ! Two Every, days. One ounce is sixty calories, and this is. Yeah, a lot of fucking calories. And the amount of cholesterol, my God. The sodium, the me. sodium. Taylor, I think uh, there's a there's a body hack here, though. Like, if you eat that all in one night, you can't absorb 17,000 calories. Dude, I might actually have a heart attack and die. Yeah. <laughs> if I tried to eat, and it came with a, with a prosciutto stand that you lean it into. And it oh came my God. With, a, uh, with the highest quality prosciutto knife. Yeah. I'm dying to hear that. Tell yeah. us, what do you want so, to say? Basically, uh, every, everything went super well. The wedding itself, like we, like for the actual ceremony, we tried to like take all the things we didn't like about other people's weddings, which was namely like having to go and getting combine rid of them that. into yours. Oh, and, no, like, and combine <laughs> them. Into, well, like, like my dad's side of the family is Catholic. And if you've ever gone to a Catholic wedding, it takes fucking forever. Ever. There's so many readings. There's so many. You're kneeling, you're standing, you're kneeling, you're standing. And we were doing it outside in June, and it's more humid in St. Louis than people might guess. And so we were like, all right, it's got to. She like gave me a couple of the ceremonies to read through, and they all had like the amount of time each one takes. It was like 15 minutes, 14 minutes, 14 minutes, 13 minutes, 12 minutes. I grabbed the 12 minute one. It was like that because I was dreading getting all doused in sweat. And so for the ceremony itself, we didn't invite anybody at all other than immediate family. Like no cousins, like cousins would ask. And it's like, no, we're not opening the floodgates. It's just immediate family. So like literally my brothers, my dad, my, my dad's wife, and then my grandparents and my my grandpa, my dad's size dead, so, but my grandma isn't. So she was there. And then my, uh, my, my wife's immediate family knocked it out in like 12 minutes. And even before, like when, when we proposed like later that night or when I proposed later that night, we, I got... Uh, we both got drunk and we just were talking around like, who do we want to officiate our ceremony? And I have this very funny friend of mine who's, who's one of my best friends. And I was like, that'd be a lark if we just had him do it and had him get, had him become a minister. And so like, I just drunk texted him that night and was like, want to officiate our wedding? And he was like, hell yeah, dude. And so we just had him do it. He became a minister and everything. Uh, and we, she, my, my wife, she wanted a little bit of religious stuff in there. And I'm like, I like that, you know, throw God in there. It makes it seem more serious. Like read something from, <laughs> read something from Corinthians, but like yeah, as, as it was going, yeah. First Corinthians and, and the such, and love your wife as the Lord loves the church and such you know, a boilerplate. And like, as it's going, it, it's such a small group of people. There's no reason to have a microphone at all. And we're outdoors. And this fucking horrible DJ was like in the back, like trying to get a mic to work for my buddy who was doing the officiating. And even in the beginning, like we, I was like, hey, Matt, can you just talk loud enough? And he's like, yeah, this is easy as shit. And then as he was saying that the mic turned on, I'm like, all right, we'll give it a go, I guess. So this idiot who just spent all this time setting it up, we get to like right before. First of all, by the time like my brothers and, and her sibling, everybody's sitting down, I'm already dripping sweat. I'm so fucked. It's 94 <laughs> degrees outside. <laughs> 94 degrees. I'm, I'm a sweater. How much prosciutto had you had for breakfast? <laughs> that's, I don't see why that's either here nor there. <laughs> but a decent amount. There was definitely lunch meat to be had. And so like as we're about to do the vows and stuff, that like like middle of like, like Wednesday afternoon kind of gathering in high school where like the mic goes... Like that happens right before, and then like he's like fixing it, and like me and the officiant, like my buddy, are just like just turn it off, just, just turn it off, and the guy just turned it off, and then we did the rest normally. Went off really well. Uh, it was I, I thought the sweating was going to occur during the ceremony. It was actually the hour and a half of photos outside afterward. Mm. But I had a high IQ maneuver that morning. On the morning of my wedding, I went to Kohl's and bought two more shirts, backup mm. shirts for when I sweated through. I only needed one surprisingly but we finished that <laughs> and uh that we used the same venue for our ceremony as we did for the reception so like that was our thing is like just just immediate family at the ceremony and then have our friends and everything come for the reception it, that was a ton of fun uh the only thing i was like adamant about was like i don't want a bunch of pomp and circumstance i don't want speeches really we'll do the first dance stuff because that's nice and quick uh and and i enjoyed that uh, but I don't want speeches. I don't want toasts. I just want like people to get their food and then sit down and eat. And then we do a little first dance and everybody socializes, plays games outside, talks, catches up. And it ended up being exactly that. It was fucking perfect. It was great. Um, 
and the the dj was acting like a little weird throughout the night like kind of jumpy and stuff and i didn't see this it was after i had gone outside to, to do like like Woody knows he's married. You end up doing like the rounds where it's like, I can't wait to like talk to my friends and hang out. It's like, no, bitch, you're talking to every single person that's here. Yeah. And so you do that. And then I was talking to a buddy later in the evening and he was like, hey, did you, you, you notice, uh, did you notice anything about your DJ? And I'm like, yeah, he, he like disappeared a few times. And he's like, yeah, I walked mm-hmm. in the bathroom. <laughs> and he was standing next to the counter and he just, as soon as he heard me open it, he went, hey, hey, what's up? And like, and <laughs> apparently he kept dipping off into the fucking bathroom and doing coke. And that's not the vibe. That's not the vibe of the wedding. <laughs> that's, that's not the the environment. Yes, it was. That's not the environment we're trying. Well, he's trying to make that the vibe, but that's not the environment we're trying to cultivate. Was him doing fucking cocaine in the bathroom, and he was all right, I suppose. Uh, the all that went fine. Like the reception, everything. Not that much else to say. It was great. We had a wonderful time. And then the honeymoon. We went to uh, we had one day off after the wedding and then we headed to Jamaica for a week, uh, which was a blast. And the whole time I was like, all right, I, I went to Jamaica like eight, nine years ago when my dad got remarried and it was super easy to get weed. I hope it's that easy this time. Like didn't know what to expect. And I like the the porter, the guy that like carries your bags, like we get to the hotel or the resort rather. And he starts moving it all. And he's he starts telling me, he's like, you open up that pamphlet there. You can get yourself a free cigar down at the lounge. And I was like, a free cigar down at the lounge, you know, uh, you know, Joseph, I don't smoke cigars, but I, uh, I smoke ganja. Can you help me with some ganja? And this was four minutes after we got there. And he's like, <laughs> yeah, man, you, know, you just come up here. You know, and I'm like, how much is it? And he's like, you know, 50, 60, 70 dollars. And I'm like, which one, though? <laughs> such a Jamaican leprechaun, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't do Jamaican. I can't. I'm doing my best. It's a hard one for me for some reason. But anyway, I, I, I like tell it. him, and I'm like, yeah, like, how much is it? Like, do you guys do grams? Like, what, what is the amount? And he's like, I'm going to level with you, man. It, just give me like 50, 60, 70. I bring it back to you. And I was like, all right. So I gave him 70 bucks. He leaves. And every time that happens, I'm like, have I been <laughs> taken for a fool? And then no, <laughs> immediately, immediately he comes it? He comes back. And it was like maybe it was a little, maybe a slight bit less than a quarter. Slight bit okay. less than a quarter. Fair so not, not too bad. And But it was in like a fake pharmacy pack. Like they had clearly uh, put it into a pharmacy <laughs> pack and like resealed it. And like, like, like I don't know how they, they did it, but they did that. And it was like so clearly not pharmaceutical grade weed. There were seeds in it. But oh dear, <laughs> but and then like uh, going around the resort, they're selling pieces, they're selling chillums and all like little stores. And so I just get one of those. And so the whole the whole week, I'm just grinding that up and smoking. And people approach apparently spreads like wildfire around there. Like, like, hey, this guy, you know, he'll buy it. He'll he'll buy it. So like approach him. And so I was like, like, I felt like a princess, like all week. <laughs> like I have members of the resort being like, hey, you want some hash oil, man? And I'm well, like, you know, I got him easier. And then, uh, you're you're me- actually you're actually a mark, by the way. Oh, I'm like, I'm I sure. think I think you bought like five dollars or ten dollars worth of weed for 70. And they're like, yo, this is the guy. And they're like, bring it. They're like, I got shit too, man. Get it. This is 48 bucks right here. 48 bucks. I think that's what they were. Uh, maybe. I mean, maybe like $10 there, but that it I, I, I know what weed amount. It sounds like a win-win. It was, clearly, it was about a, a little less than a quarter for about seven. Listen, as long, listen I, really I would be going smart. being like, yo, I don't want trouble with anyone. I don't want to end up on anyone's bad list. Here's a couple <laughs> bucks for you and your buddies. Just let's get it over. Oh here. no, the, the guy. I, I gave him the seventy bucks, and like when he came back, like I threw him a twenty just for like maybe like twenty five bucks just for going to grab it. Oh, so he's like make telling sure everyone. Sure. He's yeah, he's telling, telling everyone, everyone. Like this guy gave me a great <laughs> tip, and I don't give a fuck. It's my honeymoon. I got I got some cash to burn, and so like maybe three days later, this like random woman who works there walks up, and she's like, you know, you want anything that's you know not smokable? And I was like, you got edibles like gummies or anything? And she's like, let me see. And so like. Nothing happens the rest of the day. I assume she forgot seven or no, it was like eight in the morning. The next day I'm sitting, drinking coffee on the balcony, looking at the ocean, like reading my Stormlight Archive book. And I just hear this Jamaican lady who's like looking up like, hey, and I was like, hey, and I was like, hello, like, can I help you? I forgot who it was because I was probably you know drinking the evening before. And she was like, I got what you need. And I was like, <laughs> OK. And I'm like, what did She's I been ask baking her cookies for? All night. And so I came down there and she like has this this big container of gummy bears, like not gummy bears, like gummy cubes, like clearly homemade gummy cubes. And like I like, 
smell it to make sure it even smells like kush i'm like okay this smells like real edibles and she's like you know 30 bucks and i'm like all right whatever I gave her 30 bucks and i left it in our little beach bag and this little pouch all of the gummies melted into a jelly and now there's no way to know what how much you're having it. and so like the next Curtis. morning <laughs> the next morning like, we we're getting ready to go to breakfast or out to the beach and i wanted to eat some edibles uh or i guess this is right after this or no the next morning after it had melted and i was like i was scooping it out and like i was like eating it like an army ration with a spoon <laughs> <laughs> and i was just trying to eyeball like oh it tastes like just weed oh it's just terrible <laughs> there's no flavor and i just ate like half the bag and maybe 30 minutes later i'm like damn it this is probably nothing and then i genuinely got pretty fucked way, way higher than i thought i was going to eating those edibles and so that was a win so um, every edible story goes yeah i was uh I, I thought it was going to be a week of a lot more drinking, but once like the pot started flowing, it was like, yeah, this, this is kind of nice. I like that better, better actually. I like and they the only edible. have uh, they only have red stripe there, and red stripe tastes like shit. That's the it beer. Tastes like shit. Yeah, um, and so and even when I was and I, I I had a mixed drink. I had one mixed drink the whole time on the first day. Like this table table next to us, this nice couple were like, try a Bob Marley, and I'm like, okay, and I got one of those, and I'm like, there's like three shots of liquor. Some heavy handed Jamaican guys trying to get me fucked up to get tips. And so I was like, this is risky. I'm, this is going to ruin my, my week. And so I just was drinking Red Stripe the whole time. But it was so fucking hot that after every like 11 ounce Red Stripe, you'd have to drink 20 ounces of water. And so getting mm -hmm. drunk was an absolute chore. Yeah. <laughs> it I was. Like, it I took like for, edible honey. There were better. so many hey, evenings. Get a bottle of rum, dude. There, well, we did get a bottle of rum. My my wife was like, I ordered to room service because obviously unlimited room service, and they bring in, they restock your bar. And she's like, I ordered a bottle of vodka and a bottle of rum. And they don't tell you prices. She thought she was getting little airplane bottles to like put in the drinks. She bought a liter of rum and a liter of vodka. That's we did. We barely touched it because like because how much were they? I have no idea yet. <laughs> oh, <laughs> probably my. probably somewhere we, between we didn't open the rum and three hundred dollars. Yeah, we didn't open the rum, and so she brought it home. Uh, <laughs> she, she had one vodka drink, and that was it. Uh, but yeah, mostly it was like getting stoned. Uh, really, really drilling the poor late night room service people. Like, I, I yeah. need another pizza with Jamaican jerk yeah. chicken on it. Or like, <laughs> I need a whole Jamaican jerk, <laughs> Jamaican jerk meal. And I remember once them being like, "Yeah, and this is uh, room A thirty four. And I was like, "Yeah." And they're like, "Did you just order a, a jerk chicken up about forty minutes ago?" And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I don't see why that matters." <laughs> 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 so I, kept, I ate so much jerk chicken. I was I was eating all sorts of shit. Turns out Jamaicans they put pumpkin in everything. Very odd. You wouldn't expect that. Uh, but yeah, we had a blast. It was stoned as shit. You know, we got got a nice massage. Went on some like off resort treks to like a waterfall area, which was nice. Except the waterfall thing was kind of fucking bullshit. I thought it was gonna be like. Like it was a really cool, like tiered waterfall that was probably looking up at like 600 yards long. And like you started at the bottom and like through the water, you trudged up it. Something they wouldn't allow in the US because people would slip and crack their head. And I was like imagining like from the pictures, I'm like, this is gonna be so cool. Like I'll be able to like be on my own, like going up and exploring little nooks and crannies. No, the guy's like, all right, grab the hand of the person behind you, like boy, girl. And so like, <laughs> bless her heart, she was so nice, but this, morbidly obese woman was behind me and so so much of my what, my trek, a fatty a huge fatty and it normally you know whatever I, I well babe i don't care except that fat it's my people job. make ah. me sick you know fat <laughs> people in that context make me sick because i was having to take all my effort to pull her up onto these ledges like she's she's half a second from a broken ankle at any given point and this uh, this fucking Jamaican tour guide could not give less of a fuck. He's walking around like clearly on something. Keeps just yelling like, "Round here, they call me Bigfoot," and I'm like, "I know Bigfoot. Can you can you, can you grab <laughs> nah, a fat woman on, behind he me?" The, he was oh. hitting on her when he was saying that. No, he, he was just he was, he was no no he was announcing it. Just uh, oh. he's he's. I thought he saw that fatty thin. and he was like, "Yeah, they call me Bigfoot." No, he he kept like walking over and being like, "Good job, man. Good job." He kept calling me like he kept going, "Good job, boss. Keeping everyone safe." And it's like, You're ruining my experience right now by making me have to eave this. Were you high? Up. Were you? Yeah, high I was. I was really, really. High. <laughs> That's great. I love that. I feel like you're missing out. Like this is just pull day, Taylor. This is your specialty. It's pull day. <laughs> yeah, okay, it was pull day, but it was like I wanted it to be like free climb, like walking around day. But no, that was not in the cards. It was like, and anytime I would get like a no, little bit ahead, I bent over back. rows. 
Yeah, really, it will, some really intense bad form rows as you're standing on <laughs> your eye. I no, have a but, question. Were you, was yeah. there any dead dogs when you were there on the street? I didn't see it, but it's funny you say that. My my wife, like on the way to the resort on the bus, she's like, oh, my God, did you see that? A dead dog. So she no, saw I, went, I went to Jamaica once, and I was not prepared to see, like, I saw, like, eight dead dogs in the two days I was there oh, like wow. on the street, and I wasn't ready for that. I didn't know that was part of it. And yeah, I mean, I, I know people that have been there like, yeah, I saw the dog where people didn't. And I just, yeah, I guess you did. Dude, you it was depressing. It was depressing as shit driving because, like, you know, Jamaica, like outside resorts, it's a third world country. And so like, it's brutal driving. Like I was going to say 80% of the buildings are unfinished. That's actually really generous. I'd say like 90, 90 plus percent of the buildings, like you're driving by and it's like concrete with rebar still sticking out of the top. And there's so much unfinished that it's like, what's, what is going on? Like what Taylor, happened? You're looking at it through the wrong lens. That rebar is a testament to their ambition. Someday, Someday. they're, they're going to have a two-story building. They're, I see buildings without rebar. I'm like, that guy, he doesn't dream. He's given up. <laughs> he has no future. Yeah. Dude, I saw multiple restaurants where like, they're clearly not worried about copyright law. I saw jamaican tgi fridays <laughs> <laughs> but it was That's just sick. a shack that a guy painted that on it just said it's like That's green so paint good. jamaican smart. tgi fridays smart, smart and cool if yeah i went to i went to a synagogue when i was in jamaica really they, like, I didn't yeah know. there was like one or two there or something but or maybe just the one we, i went with like my mom and we were like yeah cool jewish shit be here Cool, man. Are there Jamaican <laughs> Jews? Yeah, probably Jamaicans. There has to be. Oh, <laughs> there must be some Jews. Uh, well, there's like there's like a, a a line that is similar from Judaism and Rastafarian is something like that. There is a, there is a, a, a some commonality apparently or something like that, like some shit. But I don't know. Rastafarianism don't know. seems pretty tight. Like you you could tell which Jamaican guys on the side of the road were Rasta men. And because yeah. they had the big fucking hat thing on and they looked really dirty and high. Mm. I bought a stick when I was there. I still have it. Really? It's like a walking stick, like a carved walking stick. It's like in my mom's house, like in my old bedroom, it's just there, like leaned up on my bed because for like, I was just a thing I like swing and poke with and shit. Dude, like, were all you sick, on guard I was right. for all like the scammers? Like the, the because like this. Oh like, yeah, I, I, I went I, in the I, place. Yeah, they they do that thing where they're like, this one guy was like carving little things, like th these little like statues, pieces of shit. Well, it actually looks kind of cool. And he was like, "No man, you know, you take this right here." And I'm like, "I'm not gonna take that. Then you're gonna give me a second one that costs money." And then he yeah. was like, "Well, what happened sure? to me was I got I got I went and I I saw like there was like a pipe there, mm -hmm. and I was like, uh, oh, like I'll get I'll get a pipe. There's a cool pipe." And I was like, uh, can I get this pipe? Uh, no, he, he he had one. He was like, here, he's like, five bucks, five bucks. And I was like, no, that one there. And he was like, nah, that one's 20. And it was like way better, but yeah. it still looked like it was five bucks. Maybe he's like, no, that one's 20. And I was like, okay, 10 bucks, 10 bucks. And he was like, mm, 10 bucks. Uh, okay. And I'm like, cool. And then he goes and he puts it in the bag. And just because I was like, excited right away, I took the bag as I'm giving the money and I pull it out and it's the $5 one. <laughs> and I was like, this is the five dollar one. He's like, okay. He's like, you take two. And he gave <laughs> take me two. two. And I was like, I don't want that. I want the ten bucks back. And I'm like cracking up. It's funny. So I just left with the two pipes. And dude, they scam the like, shit fine. out of you. And like yeah. in your head, you're like, dude, some guy tries to scam me like I'm a rube. I'm gonna not yeah. be involved. And then like they they do it, and you're like overcome by like almost like oh god, your life is rough, man. Like yeah. well, I'm that's so, why I said it I'm to you, so and I was lucky. like, you were a mark because I've been to Jamaica. Oh, sure. I've been a mark. <laughs> oh, like the, the like weed I got, thing? I bought two pipes that I didn't want instead of the one pipe I did want, you know? Oh, yeah. The, the weed thing, they were, they were following me around all, but they were not following just me around. They were following everyone. Around. Everyone was high. Like yeah. the entire That's resort. Really, I like actually weed. like that. I like that a lot. Not that I have a honeymoon planned or anything or a marriage plan, but I like going to Jamaica and getting fucking high yeah, as they, hell they have for a, the honeymoon. A, and I like that better than drinking or anything. Like I, I agree. They they have a, they had like a little smoking area for cigarettes. And I watched this like fat fucking boomer guy, big uh, belly. Like, 
didn't like like one of he like, was fat big, he disgusting. was fat. big ah. fat boomer looks like 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 a rush limbaugh listener and i was walking him like walk over to the smoking area rush like, limbaugh <laughs> listener. <laughs> he's probably gonna like <laughs> he's probably gonna roast some like cigarette and then he pulls out just an enormous joint and like by himself this like boomer like the like the twitter boomer with the reflective sunglasses just stands there and smokes it all by himself it, it was a cool respect for boomers for that i liked it <laughs> but yeah it was it was a lot of overeating and that That's was tremendous. Too. So yeah, had a great time. That's great. I love the late night pizza ordering room service. That's a great move. Once like you're in a hotel on vacation room service, like for me, like I'm about it. <clears throat> Every single decision, I'm like, mm -hmm. we could find something that might be quite a bit better or someone could bring us something and I'm down with yeah. them bringing something. Oh, for sure. Like yeah. and it was, part of it was the fun of like room service. Neat. Like I, I never order room service. When yeah. Mm -hmm. It's it, when we were in Cherokee a few months back, like like I had the most expensive breakfast I may have ever had. Like I think that bowl of oatmeal was twelve dollars, and it was just a bowl of oatmeal, yeah. and it was not fancy oatmeal. Yeah, there weren't like bowls. they put a like fruit on it or something. There, give you a couple anything. blueberries. They didn't give you any. Of no, that? it was just oatmeal. Yeah, and, like, I ordered like a full breakfast. It was like oatmeal and like two scrambled eggs and some bacon and and like even the toast I think was like six dollars for like two slices of toast. I'm pretty sure I had a forty-five dollar breakfast, and it was it did not live up to to, to the forty-five dollar price tag. There's like it, nothing on a breakfast menu that should even approach forty-five dollars. No, like, breakfast is the getting? cheapest meal of the day unless you're having like steak. I actually took advantage of the hotel gym while I was there, so basically I missed uh, because of what's going on with my wife, um, and it was. Going there and seeing like this like high quality expert doctor made me like so much more like, oh, that original guy did not know what the fuck he was talking about because the original guy being like, it's a tumor and I'm happy to operate whenever he's like clearly thinking about playing tennis. <laughs> and then like this guy who has an Italian accident, accent and is Italian, the Mayo Clinic much just scooped him up from Italy and brought him over. And he's like, yes, it is uh, very obviously not the tumor. <laughs> and it's like and he's like it, it, in like passing it was like that level of like genius almost autism where he's like yes. it's, it's actually called a cavernous malformation which is in the spine very rare but it's the blood vessels get overgrowing and tangling and that can leak because those blood vessels have thinner walls and that leakage of blood in there can cause you know tons of problems because it's the spinal cord um and he was like, just as an aside, and he's like, and it's something, uh, I guess you could say I'm the world expert on it. You know, doctors, <laughs> when they try and learn about cavernous malformation, they read my book. Um, <laughs> Kevin, you, may, malformation. You, may, you may have heard of it. Cavernous <laughs> malformation. <laughs> for dummies. <laughs> yeah, for dummies. <laughs> and I was like, all right, this makes me feel a lot better. But he basically was like, uh, they did another MRI there because apparently, like, there are levels of, like, what you can see on an MRI and, like, the one at Mayo is like twice as good because they probably spent three times as much. They've on got it. a better MRI there. It's yeah, the they one even, at Mayo though. Like, yeah, like, I'm still a little upset. I feel like everybody should have be on the same playing field oh, as far as equipment goes. With the like, Sloan Kettering, I'd be like, yeah, they've got this year's MRI. I, I just yeah. imagine them pulling out the stethoscope and it's got fucking digital readout on it or something like. They're like, <laughs> oh no, no, that's a heart murmur you have. What, what are you? What are you talking about? Oh yeah, I can hear it with. My, no, it, see, there's a view screen here. It's like an iPad. See, I can yeah. see your heart. You can see my heart with your stethoscope. Yeah. The, the yeah. lady, when she was like giving us the, the exit paperwork, or whatever it's called, it said they're like in eight weeks to 12 weeks, get another MRI with a 7M machine. And she like said like, and you know, it doesn't have to be 7M. I think we're one of the only places in the country that has one. They probably have a 3M, but that's fine. And it was like, <laughs> wait, they're like four behind? <laughs> like, they're very behind at this point you know unless it's like the way xbox does it and they just went three to seven yeah uh yeah. that's probably what it is but yeah the the last week has been just non-stop go like we we drove to mayo clinic seven hours in uh rochester and minnesota and it was just pretty much every day like and that's if people don't know mayo clinic is a very well-known medical clinic and their thing is like uh if, if it's something urgent that needs to be taken care of in like a week's time, instead of setting months, 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 months of uh, appointments, you go to the Mayo Clinic. It's and so, so funny you say that. Yeah. Like, like, I'm pretty sure everyone knows. There's, I, was, I was literally um, recommended a documentary on, uh, on, on Amazon. It was called like 
Mayo Clinic, the miracle workers or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> they're very good. I mean, there's a reason they they like on their campus, like all these flags. They're like, number one. Ah, and then it's a bunch of, you know, fucking doctors walking around and everything. But uh, so we were doing <laughs> with tests foam fingers <laughs> with foam fingers. <laughs> <laughs> they have like T-shirts like radiology rules. No, fuck <laughs> dermatology, man. Like, little rivalries. But uh, yeah, it was nonstop, you know, doing tests and everything. Um, pretty like my wife and I pretty much instantly when we were talking to the doctors there, cause you get assigned like a team of doctors, not just one guy. And like, we immediately knew like these people are way, way better. They're taking this more seriously. Um, they gave her a little more, I think comfort about it. Gave both of us that where they were like, you know, you know, and he was realistic about it too, which I liked where he's, you know, saying we're saying kind of what's the, what's the long-term thing here? You know, she's in a lot of pain, but actually the week we were there, her pain started getting a little bit lighter. Um, but I think that could be, you know, she hasn't been working. She's, you know, we were, I'm forcing her to take it extra super easy. Um, and she got on that second MRI. He said that it, the amount of blood had gone down and that since it was going down and the, the, it didn't seem to be actively bleeding that we should take eight to 12 weeks and then get another MRI. And then he can say, you know, okay, well, it's still progressing in the right direction or it's really not progressing in the right direction. I'm going to recommend surgery. And it's kind of like, you know, hopefully it's going in the right direction. But even then he was saying like, even if it totally disappears, you know, there's uh, this is really rare. And based on our data, you know, it's just about 50% chance it'll rebleed. And if it rebleeds, you know, that could cause even more problems. And so what might be best to do would be to go in, take care of it, you know, before it could bleed worse. And even then yeah. he was like, you know, but this is a spinal cord surgery, not the spine, the, the cord. So like, it's not uncommon. Like you might get uh, numbness in some areas on your legs. You might have like a weakness that you need to like then learn to work through. And so uh, that made us both feel better. We, we agreed that it seems best. And he seemed to lean this way too. He was like, you know, take eight weeks, 12 weeks, come back or just do it in St. Louis. And then I'll, I'll analyze it and tell you. And so that's where we're at right now. Um, she's still, not uh doing anything but just staying around the house and she's like i'm i'm often kind of like a hermit and so i don't mind staying home all the time and she's not like that at all and so it's i'm having to like keep telling her like no you can't go hang out with your nephews you can't you like like you can't pick up our 12 pound dog Dude, right now no no tackle football in the park yeah. <laughs> show her the ways of agoraphobia did you Baby, yeah. <laughs> get yourself an xbox account and uh did learn they, to play yeah. did they warn her against flying or anything like that uh, that it that was a concern, but also she just naturally is is wary on planes, like gets nervous, mm. and it she would be like all tensed up, and so yeah, we you just know what decided that. to drive. Yeah, um, that's what that's exa that's exactly why I asked because that's a long drive. I don't mm -hmm. know, I it like drives like that. I'm so fucking stiff and angry when I get there. After four hours is like my max. Like, like obviously I've driven, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the longest I've been in a car continuously is from the break of, you know, from 5 a.m. until midnight the next day or something like that, probably. So like all day before. But mm -hmm. I'm not dri but driving continuously. Like if it's more than four or five hours without a stop and like a real stretching, I hate it. Yeah, I, uh, I wanted to save it for the end because it's not like a joke thing. But I had uh, a bunch of people message me about my wife's thing going on. So I wanted to give people a little update for Danny's benefit. Uh she had uh, a, they thought it was a tumor in her spinal cord, which is a very obviously serious thing. So we went to the Mayo Clinic up in Minnesota all of last week. Uh, and we were there getting tests done, more scans and everything. Really, really good doctors there. I, it's, I, I'm going to cover it more deeply on the PKN. So earlier this week on PKN, if you are on the Patreon, you already got that. Um, but basically we went there, like immediately they do scans and everything. It takes, you know, not nearly as long there as it would the traditional hospital. And they found out, or this really good doctor, world class, was like, this is not a tumor. It's what's called a cavernous malformation, which is where blood vessels in your spinal cord like in the cord itself, I'll get bundled up and, and fucked up and it causes bleeding and that can cause tremendous amounts of damage. So like on one hand, it was like, I don't remember how I described it on, on PKN, but it was like, like the tumor would have been horrible, horrible news, but like a cavernous malformation is not like a, Oh, good, hooray. Like it's still an incredibly serious thing. And uh, her pain was going down for a while last week. Cause I was like insisting, like she couldn't be on her, like, lifting anything doing anything uh go i went to my brother's 
wedding this past weekend. We like drove all the way from I thought we, we thought we were going to miss his wedding. And thankfully, we were able to make it. But we, we drove all the way back from Minnesota to St. Louis, slept and then drove straight to Kansas City for his wedding. And so my wife was on her feet a good bit those two days. And just being on her feet those two days, we got her back here and she had like another big flare up of pain the past couple days, I guess, since PKN uh, doing a little better this evening. Um, but what initially it was going to be, uh, surgery or you take a little break and you see if the bleeding naturally the swelling goes down and gets, uh, more manageable for surgery. Cause you obviously don't want to go in there when it's at its worst. And, um, what they said was, okay, in, in about eight to 12 weeks, get another MRI in St. Louis and then send it to us at Mayo and we'll analyze it, see what's up and what we recommend. Um, but because of her pain flare ups, again, we're moving that to maybe like a month from now instead, because it is like time is of the essence. And the thing with these bleeds is they can happen at any time for any reason. Like you don't know. Um, and if a bleed gets severe, it can cause things like numbness permanently or, you know, in a severe like paralysis, like very, very serious things. Um, and so, yeah, we're waiting about four weeks or so. Do that again. Uh, if we hear from the doctor, like, Hey, it hasn't progressed. It's actually like getting a little smaller, uh, that might, depending on his recommendation, that could either be an indication of, you know, give it another month and see, or it might be, you know, it's gone down enough that it's more easily operable and it's near the surface of the spinal cord. And so we could like cut it open go in there and like drain out the amount of blood we could. Um, but there's all just, even if it shrinks up like teeny tiny, just it having been there and bled means there's like a 50% chance in the future it's going to bleed again. And you don't know, it could be days weeks months years you like you don't know when it would bleed again apparently if you get the surgery it can cut down on that risk a good bit the future bleeds but still nothing's for certain so that's uh that was the real fast version update of it i got so an unbelievable amount of messages from people being really kind and supportive which is which is a nice change and <laughs> and uh yeah and so thank you guys all i i saw people like I had people reaching out to me like, Hey, we're going to start a GoFundMe," And I'm like, please do not do that. Like, don't, don't start a GoFundMe. Dude, like, I've raised so much money. They happen. just keep sending it to me. They just, yeah, they yeah. just keep sending it to Kyle. <laughs> I wasn't going to tell you. Well, never forget it. Yeah, look, look, never mind. I, 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 I named the organization, the Taylor fund. That has, <laughs> that has nothing to do with you. It's, just, no. it's no. just called the Taylor fund. It's, <laughs> it's, a, it's about, it's about getting me a nice line of suits. It's <laughs> called my Taylor. <laughs> you fools. Uh, weird. He spells really? his name that way. <laughs> <laughs> it's dumb on the surface, but what makes bleeding so bad? Do you know, does bleeding mean yeah. pressure? What, like it would seem so, like breeding is a, a way to shrink this thing. So the, the bleeding, because it's in the spinal column, uh, there's nowhere for it to go. Uh, so blood there just accumulates and by pressure, it can like impact nerves, which causes weakness or like, uh, numbness, uh, like neuropathy feelings, which is painful or just like straight up, like sharp stabbing pain. And it's like a cacophony of pains because it's your nerves. And so it could go from like a dull thud ache to like sharp to, numbness to tingling to like just a whole range of it and it it, it is my understanding caused by the pressure build up there uh and how and and what it's doing at the time like it's so complicated we still don't know everything about the spinal cord it's it's you know really difficult another surface level dumb question but like what hurts is it her back that hurts where the spinal cord is or does it like shoot down her legs because nerves do shit yeah like it's uh it's in her back like in a band around here is where oh, it'll get very intense like and a belt. like a belt. belt and then uh, in addition to that, she'll get like leg pain, like shooting down her, both of her legs and then like numbness, tingling in the lead legs, like feeling a little shaky, which is like fucking <laughs> really scary to be, you know, see my wife being like, my, my legs are really shaky right now. And it's like, we'll like, do, do we need to, down. Like, to get in the car and drive to Mayo <laughs> right now? And I keep telling her that I'm like, just, 1 a.m. Drop of a hat. Wake me up. You got to go to Mayo. Like get in the car. I'll drive the seven hours. Or like, like last night, it was scary. She just like sat up in the middle of the night, like like Taylor, like 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 yelping in pain, and like just had to like sit up and like breathe for a couple minutes. Uh, and I'm like, do we need to go somewhere? Do we need to do anything? And she's like, no, 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 no. I it, it's starting to subside a little bit, but it woke me up. It was so intense, and it was. Does she have any painkillers? Uh, they 
painkillers don't work as well on these nerve pains. Like you need to really dope yourself up with a lot of it. Um, and I accept your we haven't, term. <laughs> we, we haven't. Uh, she, she speaking my language. Yeah, she, she doesn't want to use them really. Uh, she doesn't See, really like ideal. them. Ideal. Perfect. But yeah, <laughs> yeah not for her. I can, I can, I can, can get the them though, right? We're really yeah. asking about for the Colorado trip. <laughs> oh, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> a, few, a few vials of morphine, and, and you know, yeah. like, like, like I can handle the injection myself. Uh, yeah. Like, oh, pain pill. Would these go good with a Chardonnay? <laughs> <laughs> Either good or bad. You know, you can, you can go either way with it. But yeah, um, a lot of those opiate pills don't oh, work. Oh, that's as well what I should have asked issues. for. I'm so dumb. I should have asked for fucking codeine syrup, my favorite drug. I could have been high all week. Damn it. Go back. Go to a different doctor. <laughs> Are you streaming again, Taylor, or no? Uh, no, not yet. I think I'm going to kick it up again soon, though. Uh, I haven't for a while. What, what happened with I that? I'm the show's asking. most recent streamer. Oh. Yes. Yeah, yes, you are. <laughs> I, I don't know the story. Do you mind giving yeah, me the two second? Uh, my, basically, my, my wife has uh, a health issue, a problem with her spinal cord right now. I haven't, I haven't dressed on the show in a while. but I, uh, And basically, it was like, you know, all that time at night that I would, you know, if I'm not doing this or PKN or streaming, I was kind of like, all right, well, this is like a lot more important than that. It's a, it's a very serious thing. It's called the cavernous malformation in her spinal cord, which is really rare. It's an overgrowth of blood vessels. They thought it was a tumor. Uh, and then it, they figured out when we took her to Mayo Clinic way up in Minnesota that it wasn't a tumor. It was this malformation of, of blood vessels and that can bleed and cause a huge number of problems ranging from like pain which, you know, she had a pretty painful night last night too, to like, you know, if something really bad happens and there's a really bad bleed, it could be paralysis. So it's very scary. Um, we were originally, or I guess you know, so many things have changed that it almost matches back up with what I said a couple months ago, that we're still waiting to do the surgery because she's, she's still struggling with pain and everything. But um, because she's improving, you know, as a whole, uh, we're hoping that we can, because it's easier for the doctor, the surgeon to remove and take care of if it's like shrunk a lot instead of when it's really overgrown. And so if we can wait it out and hopefully it doesn't rebleed, then we can either avoid a surgery. That's what we're praying. Or we'll have to just go to Mayo and get the, the surgery, which, uh, you know, insurance doesn't cover huge amounts of it. We found out, but it's such a rare problem that like there are like one hand number of people in the country that have dealt with this. And so Jesus. the guy at Mayo this dude with like an Italian accent, very, uh, he wrote the book, all the pamphlets on cavernous malformations that he? happened in this, but he's, I'd say mid fifties. Oh, okay. Probably mid fifties. Um, still with it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, and so we're still waiting. We're hoping that it'll continue to go down. If a couple months go by and we get another MRI and they say it hasn't shrunk or that they think it might bleed again, there's no way to predict the bleed. Um, then we'll probably go the surgery route, but we're hoping to, because you don't want invasive surgery, especially on your spine. There's always a huge amount of risk there. Like it's, and it's not on the spine, it's in the spinal cord, which is like fucking scary very, 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 very scary for both of us. And so really the streaming thing was like, you know, I'm going to take a break for a while. These evenings, I'm going to spend time with my wife. You know, we're, we're both very, very anxious about it, thinking about it all the time. And so that's kind of been where I'm at. Uh, because now we're planning to wait a couple more months or at least like another, yeah, I guess another eight weeks or so before she gets another MRI, we have to go back up to Mayo or we're going to go back up to Mayo to get the MRI because their MRI machine even is better than anything in like the, the rest of the Midwest. It's like two levels above it and they can see more, more distinct detail, which on something that small, you really need to see. Uh, so we're hoping and, you know, really that we can go up there, get the MRI. They'll say it's continued to shrink, you know, hopefully pain continues to go down. But we're prepared, you know, you know, it's her mentally preparing for it more than me, but me also. Like, I, I'm so worried sick about her. Um, but, yeah, sorry, that's a huge downer. But that's that's why I've been taking the break from streaming, just because it was kind of like a, you know, there are more important family things right now. I need to be there for my wife, especially yeah, in those, sorry, like, sorry nights. That up. I didn't, no, no, I didn't no, 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 not, not, nice not at all, not at all, not at all. Uh, yeah, people, nice people, ask, people, <laughs> people ask me about it often, <laughs> and so uh, it's good I, I, I talked about it again. Um, but so yeah, is it I'll that you again. can't stream because you're caretaking for all the time or is it more just knocked out of the groove? And it's, it's like knocked out of the groove, but also like it's, it's good for both of us instead of like 
multiple nights a week, her being out there by herself, like kind of ruminating on all these scary things uh, that I'm out there with her. We're watching movies together. We're, you know, playing games together or whatever it is. And that's good for both of us. Like, it's not me doing it for her. Like, I want to be around her, too, because I she's my wife and I care about her deeply. And I'm just, you know, want to be there for her however I can. But gotcha. Yeah, I'm, I'm planning to kick up streaming again, though. Uh, I don't know how often or, or what I'll even do. I if I leave it up to the audience, actually, what if I come back and all I do is magic now? For a while, I, yeah. Have you had this thought that you want to get her? operated on so that this doesn't cause a problem during pregnancy like if she's going to pump out a kid or two then you don't want her to face this during that yeah that's definitely been a thought in our minds uh so we're not getting pregnant right now because of this especially and you. you know yeah especially me i'm not gonna ever get pregnant i'm a man but um <laughs> yeah that definitely has entered into it um I don't but know then it's also like men can if, get pregnant not this one, but, uh, um, okay. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's kind of what we were thinking also. And so before we did that, we'd want to have, and even then, like, unfortunately it's not like a broken leg. Like there's so little data on this that like, even when we're yeah, asking like the guy who next. wrote the book on it, he's like, what can we do to predict a bleed or what should we have her, what activities should she not be doing this, that the other thing, all these questions. And he's like, you know, I, I wish I could tell you more. There's not enough data. Like this is a very rare thing. And so we don't know what causes a bleed. We don't know how to predict it, but it can bleed again at any time. And we're like, okay, but once you do the surgery, it won't bleed again. He's like, well, we can't guarantee that either. You know, like it could, it could bleed again. The surgery could fix it. And so it's like, well, fuck, this is a very, you know, he's like, and genetically, it could be like a genetic thing that ends up going away. So it's like, there's so many up in the air things, even when talking to like the expert of experts on it that it's like, it's difficult, I feel like, to make a decision. But, but the surgery is designed to stop this from happening in the future, right? Like It, it is. They yeah. never they never want to guarantee an outcome, but that is mm -hmm. the point of it. Yeah, yeah. And like he said that like with su successful surgeries, he's had patients get it and then go 15 years with no problems or whatever it is. Uh, so it's just a matter of there being so little information about it that it's like, okay, mm -hmm. but is it like, we get the surgery and then there's a 10% chance it'll bleed again. Is it a 30%? Is it now it's 50, 50 instead of a, a foregone eventuality? Like where is that line and, and when does it make sense? Because, you know, if it's not that big of a benefit, spinal cord surgery is no joke. So you, you mm -hmm. don't want to go into that willy nilly, not like, Oh, your leg's broken. Let's just pop that right back. Let's, let's fix it. We'll put some screws in there, do this and that. Plate um, or two. You're good to go. Yeah. Yep. And so she's bummed because she hasn't been able to work out in months now. And like just and it'll go come and go like just yesterday I was lifting and she was down there with me walking on the treadmill. Only like a 30 minute like brisk walk on the treadmill. And last night she was having some pretty significant pain. And so it was like, well, fuck like that. I choose to believe you're down there flexing on her. Just like, man, my back feels strong. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm going to do good morning. Honey. You in? <laughs> I'm just I'm setting off the lunk alarm. And <laughs> doing my I'm throwing my own dumbbells across my gym. Do I have any cool hobbies other than like weightlifting? Uh, like, archery is yeah, magic. I, I, I think archery. archery is not cool. Archery dude. throw yeah. axes. Man, your whole life is tell me you don't have kids without <laughs> telling me you don't have kids. <laughs> <laughs> archery, <laughs> Magic the Gathering, RTS games, weightlift. Weightlifting is the only cool one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's a cool one because that means like, oh, you're staying fit. But the, what they don't know is I have no control of my diet. Taylor, do you have a baby on the way? Hell yeah. no. No. No? No, not, not. I'll keep the updates on the way, but nothing yet. Nothing okay, yet. There you go. Okay. There you, that might change things if that's a if that's part of the life plan. It could. I'll have to teach Those them or how it's a, are going to be. It, it's like a child raised in a really religious home. They're going to learn magic from a like <laughs> <laughs> with their first words. <laughs> Dude, I will. I because I'm all in. I love magic. I love I love strategy card games. I love strategy board. I just love strategy games. Sure. Video games, board sure. games, anything. And so I would absolutely force my kids to play games like that with me. Yeah. I, see, that's one. Of, look, what I had a good childhood. Suck? Then I oh, oh then no. he wins. Dude, that would be yeah. disappointing if like In my repetition. kid doesn't have a mind. Okay, you're obviously going to suck at five years old. The question <laughs> is, will you let them win or do you want to make them earn their wins? They will never I win. I will cheat to beat them so that they always know I am the alpha. 
So I don't. I I, w- I would cheat against the kid every fucking turn, and they would never know that I was doing it. Then um, that is I, I, now you, that is based in red pilled. That's they need to did. know <laughs> that I am the alpha and the omega. I am the pedophilias. Do you know what happens when you beat a child in such a fashion in a game? Yeah, you go to jail. They aspire oh, to be as great as me. That's the Michael Jordan story. They never play that game with you again. Yep. <laughs> It's the same so, way you teach regular, like when I teach a regular adult to play Magic the Gathering with me, do you think I'm like blowing mm. them out of the water? No, I make sure that it's competitive and they win. And the only time I won't, like that I will keep myself or that I will allow myself to win is if it's so obvious that I'm winning that it would be insulting not to to do stuff. But other than that, like sure. make people feel like they're learning. Oh, you're understanding the phases now. Hey, instead of me telling you what to do right now as you're learning the game, let me ask you a question. Do you have any of this type of card that you think might ruin this plan I have in play? Oh, now they're thinking for themselves. Like that that's kind of what you want to do when you teach someone a strategy game. You don't I, just want to uh, no, fucking pub you want to absolutely people. smash them so that they think you're great and then stop playing with them. It to really ties that. into my show your penis to your children philosophy. The whole yeah. like <laughs> you want your boy to see your adult-sized massive dong when he's like 8, you know, old yeah. enough to remember it but young enough not to compare. Never forget, boy. <laughs> right? And then Never as he forget. grows in, he'll be like, "Well, it's adult size, but it sure doesn't match dad's." And in the same way they think yeah. that playground was big and then they come back to it and it's not what they <laughs> thought it was it's, they have this childhood memory of dad's enormous schlong that's uh do that with magic they'll have this childhood memory of you being a master strat strat stratitician maybe and uh then uh, never let them know you're human a stri- it's called it's like a maestro but it's a strategio strategio yeah. i like it stratitician stratitician uh, <laughs> yeah, I I just don't fool like playing once, anything you with you children. Me again. I, <laughs> I had a good childhood. I didn't There's want some much, uh, strategy. But, but but we never played board games, and I always wanted to. Like we had Monopoly there, and I was always like, <laughs> play Monopoly, and I and everybody in my family is like, no, see, no, no one wants to play fucking Monopoly. No one wanted to ever play a goddamn board game. I would occasionally get to play checkers at the cold country store. I oh, played checkers stinks. with the old guys that were hanging out in there, and uh, that was it. Nobody ever wanted to play a fucking board a game. I don't even know how to play that. Part, I've, I've never part, played part cheesy. I, if you told me it was little wooden balls that you had to like roll up a ramp, I would believe you. I have no idea what that is. Did I tell you, dude, I, I, I played, uh, like I've always been into strategy games. When I was like 14, 13, maybe even like 12, 13, I got into Lord of the Rings cards. I know I've mentioned that to you, like Lord of the Rings, the strategy card game. And like, I really, my mom would like humor me sometimes and be like, oh, I'll play this with you. And she was actually very engaged and would be interested. Like my mom was always incredibly supportive of like the things I was enjoyed. And uh, my dad, like, I remember trying to get him once when I was like 11 or 12 to play this strategy game with me because like, I really wanted him to be involved in this thing I enjoyed. And so like, I asked him and he finally after so fucking long was like, yeah, I'll play with you for a bit. And I was like, oh, my dad's going to play with me. I can't believe it. And I like went down and I like set up the cards and I was like so excited to play with my dad this game. And he comes down into the basement and where we were playing on a little card table. And I like dealed him his deck and his his cards and everything. And I'm, I'm a kid. Like I'm excited to play this game with my dad. And he like sits down, clearly not stoked. And then, like, picks up the cards, which have, like, it's Lord of the Rings trading cards. There's, like, pictures of fucking Gimli and shit on mm-hmm. it. And so he picks that up and looks at it. And I, I, I will remember this till the day I die. <laughs> oh, no. I remember him going, like, I can't do it. And like just like oh, no. just like just like getting up, and then he oh, left no. and went golfing by himself. And I remember uh, like picking your dad up should cards. have pulled the Woody move. Here's what he should have done. Holy and and shit. I think this is parenting he advice. Not, he did not Taylor. Like Get high, right? And then once you're nice and high, and your kids like, Dad, will you spend some time with me? I'm like, Yeah, sure. Tell me all about your ninth favorite <laughs> Walking Dead death. <laughs> I'm here for it. Yeah, I'm I'm this is this is news. Uh I'm back on all the dating apps. Now, I am officially divorced. So there That's you go. That's true news. That's true news. Yeah. Well, welcome to the dating world. I wish you the <laughs> best of luck. 
Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, <clears throat> happened like seven months ago or so now. Uh, basically she cheated on me and then confessed it to me. So I told her I didn't want her in my house and kicked her out. And then I immediately filed for divorce. And so it was quite the process. Wow. Yeah. How'd that work financially? Well, it's so as, short. You would, as you would guess, uh, it was a rinky dink Mickey Mouse divorce. Like considering like you're only married for like a bit over a year, didn't have kids, like none of that stuff. So uh, yeah, it was as far as divorces go pretty easy, you know, mm -hmm. to get through. But and even though like there was nothing my ex said throughout the process or that my attorney told me throughout the process that made me think it was going to be some like, oh, like financially ruinous thing. Because like, like logically, I knew that. But like, damn, the amount of time like over that period, I just spent like in my own head, like just these financial worries that like I'd in my own head be like, stop like being so worried. Your whole life's going to come crumbling down. It's not. You're fine. And then it'd be like, you can't. You can't stop thinking about that. Well, what if this happens? What if this is my financial future? What if this and that? And that is uh, enormously stressful. So that was not fun. Uh, being single again uh, is is awesome. It's <laughs> it's genuinely. I, I'm really enjoying life more Lord now Satan than I comes was through again. <laughs> I I cannot believe that I'm you know, such a fucking idiot that I when I call had down to, to the through. dark man <laughs> and I ask, you know how many cats I've had to fucking kill over the last year and a <laughs> oh, half? Oh my god, dude! I I there's so much cat blood on my hands. Oh. Satan was thirsting. But he sent that demon. Oh. I, I was hoping the rest of his sentence was, I cannot believe the wisdom Kyle had all along. <laughs> that's, that's literally, I needed, you know, I'm such a midwit retard. I had to get divorced to realize that, that Kyle and Dick, my high IQ friends, they were trying to guide me down that road. Mm. They tried to guide me down that road. And in my arrogance, in my, in my pride, I, I ignored them. I didn't take their advice. So, this is a true prodigal son story. Really, <laughs> is that I'm back. Uh, <laughs> I'm like back. Iron Man one. This is <laughs> Iron Man one. I'm back. <laughs> coming out of the Afghani cave. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming out of the Afghani cave. I'm back in the mix. You know what? The the thumbnail should be me after crawling through like Andy Dufresne, and I'm back. I'm out. Mm -hmm. out. Taylor looking up at that lightning filled yeah. sky. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stop putting together Taylor's like body transformation and you know dating app uh, reappearance. Like I, I think these are related. <laughs> it's it's absolutely related. Yeah, one hundred percent. So um, yeah, this we separated in like mid October. Uh, to give people the time frame, like it's been quite a while since we separated. We've been actually officially divorced for a few months now. So like I've been been dating again and whatnot. Uh, I need to get Hinge and Bumble. I only have Tinder. But uh, yeah, I've never actually used a Bumble account. I need to Bumble's check that great. out. Bumble's it sounds my, like uh, Bumble's too much of a commitment. Are you sure you want to see a woman hinge. twice? Uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see, <laughs> we'll see where we're at. But um, yeah, I like yeah. Hinge a lot. It's weird hearing the uh, the dating conversation now. I haven't been uh, I haven't been back since uh, the big uh, uh, Taylor fiasco that I've never no, gotten no. to talk about yet. So now Kyle's got the girlfriend, and Taylor's back with old the uh, the now one hander. I'm, now I'm night. back in the church of Kyle on on the dating apps, and he's not even here to to be to be my shepherd. I don't no. think people <laughs> realize <laughs> what a like humanitarian service kyle and taylor are doing in this church of kyle right like you think they're just running through women no 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 they are fostering girls they are they are just loving them now until they find their forever homes down the road uh -huh. <laughs> forever homes <laughs> that was kyle's look of absolute just just disgust <laughs> he's not I've never been on the show this. before but it's pretty funny <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys what was your name yeah <laughs> Yeah, that was fun. After I got divorced, I was like, damn it. 
Kyle and Dick were right. <laughs> 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 Nobody in my life other than Kyle and Dick responded to that news with like, don't do it. Especially Dick. Dick was like, no, brother. Oh, get away. What a, what a horrible mistake you're making. He was like, uh, it's a legal contract that's not going to, that, that can't help you. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> It's like, yeah, All the things you need are not in that contract. <laughs> Don't sign it. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, you win some, you lose some. <laughs> <laughs> now, some people only have to learn this lesson once, Taylor. It could be you. You might be one of these lucky men. <laughs> <laughs> I'm such an idiot. Like, I'll, <laughs> so, let me tell you what you do next time, Taylor. You look happier, though. You look so much happier. Last time, you looked so <laughs> thinking about your house Defeated. and stuff and beaten yeah. down. Look it, at you. It's now. A, lot, a lot of stress. Yes, and their head looks I'm smaller. Yeah, better now. Yeah, I'm, I'm. I got. I lost a bunch of weight again. You got to be fit when you're when you're out out in the market again. You can't be a big fat fuck. Wow. You're. It I think talking about hockey less. <laughs> from the outside trailer. <laughs> from the outside. Damn, the force, that was. Look at this. <laughs> oh, whoa. The divorce looked tame from the outside. Like like the finance stuff seemed to get settled without a lot of drama by it comparison did, yeah. to other divorces 100 percent. it was really easy as far like a total rinky dink divorce as far as were there like, screaming matches on the i used to work with a guy who got oh. divorced and cubes don't give much privacy oh my Oof. god he would just like how often do you scream as loud as you can scream never, never. not him <laughs> he and this guy was chill chill as fuck but he was driven to wit's end by this divorce. Yeah, Let me the ask only you time this. I yell could is like ever, during this Could show. you ever hear him? Like he gets off the phone. That's the goddamn last time, Judith. The last time I speak to you, it's settled now. Come on! And he hangs up. <laughs> and you could you hear him? <laughs> it was it wasn't far from that. Yeah. Like like Jesus. you just don't hear people, I was gonna say men, but both men and women scream as loud as they can scream. That's yeah. not a common thing. No, he thank was, God that was not something we done. It was cordial the whole time. Like as far as divorces go, easy as shit. Like, the, but like I was like just Mister Stress, about. rather the officiating. Um, look, there's no reason to have a, a, you know, any official paperwork. I got, I got a guy Taylor. He's gonna print some pa very official looking paperwork out with everyone's <laughs> names on it. He'll, I'll be your witness, Father Kyle here. Nobody knows me. I'll put the. I, you've seen. Oh, I've got yeah. that whole priest robe, Smart. right? I like you. Yeah. My costume. <laughs> I'll be. I'll gray the, the hair up. I'll come in. I'll use a cane. I'll, I'll put a whole Johnny Knoxville face on. <laughs> I marry you. I officiate. I got the forged paperwork. Then when it's divorce time, it's like, oh, oh guess what? You just got punked. You know. <laughs> <laughs> As the creature comes out. Yeah. You know what's more like, ever, uh, I, because maybe, none of this was real. Maybe having my friends marry me like as a bit isn't a good idea <laughs> because that <laughs> one of my good buddies married me the first time because he was like we were just like afterward he was like you know i'm a i'm a minister and i'm like dude that's hilarious the same guy who tells who told the story of the oh man is it bad like who like watched that woman fall down and like break her leg that's one of my close buddies he married us <laughs> because he was like i'm still a, a minister and i was like that's hilarious do it for us so yeah, next time I'll double down on that approach. And Kyle, you can absolutely dress up and pretend to be a priest. And yeah, yeah. I'll do the voice from. Um, um, I think I may have. I, from I think the I may be. Bride. Yeah, you, you remember the you remember the Princess Bride wedding? Marriage. Marriage. <laughs> what brings ruined. us together today? <laughs> yeah, w women would love having that day made a total mockery. <laughs> I don't even think you're needed for this bit, Kyle, uh, Taylor. Yeah. Kyle could just do it himself. <laughs> <laughs> when, when Kyle eventually gets married, which I don't think will happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was. I, I'm the fucking dummy that had to had to go through it. But uh, yeah, I should have listened I'll to. I'll take a stroke Colin right Dick. before I, I that and make sure she leaves me. <laughs> and then, then, I'm sorry, but I can't be the man I promised I would be. Make a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've been 
I've been practicing stroke victim face for like eight months now in preparation for the proposal. I'm sorry, I can't be the man that you need. What are some activities that increase strokes? You have to start like doing them before the date you plan on faking your stroke. So when she goes to the doctor, yeah. like, well, he well, recently started like, you know, smoking. My and blood stuff. pressure is off the charts. Um, you need yeah, the blood dope, but way, 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 way too much. Like just yeah. to the few. I have to give blood or, or I get too many red blood cells. It, it honestly is a problem. Uh, so, you know, <laughs> already halfway there. So I've got excuses. Laying the framework right now. Very yeah, smart. I like yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I like you got to have an exit door, my friend. A parachute, if you will. When Woody goes up there and does that nonsense, he don't, he don't raw dog it. He's got not one but two parachutes. He's got an altimeter on his wrist, you know? So take mm -hmm. precautions. Yeah. Condoms not enough. Yeah, and condoms... Who's got the time? Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Are got you, the time to, to in the middle of the you know the throes of passion? If you to, had gotten oh, on the roids, they you do make me last longer. When I told you to, you wouldn't have any swimmers, and you would have frozen your seed long ago, and you'd have it in like a like a cryogenic little pod, and you could break it out. It'd be such a cool talking piece. You'd be like, "Are you ever going to have children?" You'd be like, "How funny you bring it up." Let me show you my prime boys. All right. This is they've took 80 loads of my cum and they found the five best swimmers. That's the five best swimmers out of 800 billion possible sperm. And these are my boys right here. And you got them frozen. And if you ever want to, like, put them in somebody, you got them there ready to go. Yeah. But meanwhile, no, I do you're, like on, you're on the juice. You don't make sperm and you're ripped. You're huge. You think I should be get on so tea? big if you started? Dude, if you started testosterone right now. You would turn it. You would look like Dave Bautista. And if you, <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm not even kidding. Women love Dave Bautista. <laughs> I'm talking about you'd be that thing. You wouldn't yeah. turn into an ugly old man. The Cabbage Patch head. <laughs> uh -huh. Thank you.